MPCs 1968 a Lotus Turbine Car coming up next on Monster Hobbies What's in the Box? Hello once again race car fans. Are you ready for an extremely experimental but really cool model kit? Well today we're going to be looking at MPC's a Lotus Turbine which is an amazing car really technically advanced for its age and I don't think we've ever seen anything quite like it ever again. This one's cool because it comes with a tractor too. And if you love seeing these great unboxing videos don't forget to like, subscribe and share this channel with all your friends. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video you are the first to see it. And without further ado let's go down to our pits where we will see the amazing Lotus. It's race day once again at the Indianapolis for 1968, where we have an exciting new car built by Colin Chapman and Maurice Philippe, exclusively for the Indy 500. It's a nice wedge-shaped turbine car, exciting using the brand new engine technology of the 60s. And this amazing knife-edged body is specifically designed to, of course, reduce the risk of the body actually lifting up at the high speeds on the streets of Indianapolis. So this amazing Grand Prix Series Lotus Indy Turbine car by MPC is the subject of our next model kit review. We also, of course, have the tractor here, which is a nice little feature for pushing the car onto the track. So taking a look at this amazing box art. This of course is a reproduction from 1995 under the Ertl company, but you can see the excellent detail on this. Now as we turn the box on its side, you can see exactly all the amazing technological features of this model kit. The world famous Lotus Racer with a revolutionary wedge-shaped body and turbine engine. You got the batteries up front, and then we have disc brakes on here. A detailed cockpit, authentic bucket seat, the authentic one. <laughs> uh, here we have an air scoop and intake cover, the rear springs and rear axle, all independent suspension, of course, a roll bar, authentic competition steering wheel, super detailed front and rear suspension, and the wedge body undercarriage. And then, of course, we turn over on this side, which looks much the same as the top. And then here we get our amazing features of a complete tractor, which is included, the racetrack workhorse, plus all the authentic Lotus parts, four hollow big Indy tires, the detailed instrument panel, transparent windscreen, authentic bucket seat, fire extinguisher, dual drivetrain, plated turbine engine, four-wheel drive setup, uh, Where'd we get to? And then the tractor that has the push bar. Uh, cement not included. Paint to match illustration available at your dealer. The model kit dealer, of course. And then we get back into that. So now let's just take the lid off and see what's underneath. And here, of course, we have our instruction sheet. Inside the instruction sheet, we have the decals. Let me just move that out of the way. So there we've got quite a bunch of multiple panels and components for our model kit. There's that front wedge nose, a tire, <laughs> and then suspension and turbine components. And here we've got our tractor components. That nice Lotus undercarriage. More tires. The glass components. And of course our chrome nicely sealed in a bag. So let's move all this stuff out of the way and take a look at the instructions. Here we have the instruction sheet for our Lotus Indy turbine car. There isn't much history in this about the car itself. The only thing we really get is Colin Chapman, constructor of internationally famous Lotus racing cars. This is a reproduction of the original instruction sheet. 
Now where I got my information from is this nice old book I have. It's Brand McNally's Racing Cars Color Illustrated Guide by Piero Casusi. And it's nice because it's got like the write-ups of each of the cars and everything. I've had this since I was a kid back in the 80s. But uh, if we look, there's um, the Indy cars there. And there it is right there. <laughs> so lucky I had this book. All right, moving that out of the way. The, okay, so here on the front panel we have that amazing turbine engine all going together. There are some clear parts in it as well. This is all chrome-plated according to the instructions. Oh, and what I found out is this air intake, uh, the car got 500 horsepower, and in some cases it got 550, but they made a restriction in Indy that they had to reduce this down in size, and it ended up making 450 horsepower instead of the 550. So quite a reduction. And keep in mind, the turbine engines were new and exciting. We did see a, another turbine car on this channel, and that was, of course, the uh, Johan Chrysler turbine car from 63. So again, they're, they were experimenting with the turbine engines, but in subsequent years they realized they just did not have the proper horsepower as like a regular V8 engine, which is too bad because the turbine could run any type of gas you wanted in it. Any type of fuel, I should say. And there we have our wheels with the big wide tires, the wide backings, and the race style front wheel in there. Woo! Trying to breathe as I speak English, right? Okay. <laughs> so, the instructions are nice and big, so you can see everything that's going on. There is quite an interesting um, undercarriage going in here, which all mounts onto this big pan underneath. And then we've got sort of a top frame and interior, which drops into the pan again. You can see our differentials are kind of staggered off to the edge. They're asymmetrical, or asymmetrical, I should say. And then uh, we've got our rear disc brakes and the front disc brake rotors all on around. And then down here in step two, we've got our transfer cases for the engines, the seat, the steering wheel, the instrument panel, our front suspension going in here, and then the battery pack and part of a frame for the front. Getting into this panel, these panels here. We have all our suspension components. Could almost make a steering uh, linkages here working. Posable steering, well, whatever I'm trying to say. <laughs> the turbine engine going in the center. And then there we've got the body with the glass and our little roll bar and the mirrors and the engine cover and all that groovy stuff. There's the front nose, top of the nose. And then turning to the back, we have our decal arrangement for the car itself. Very simplistic. You could make this as a cub car if you're in Scouts. <laughs> and then down here we've got our tractor. And there's the tractor engine, the transmission two-piece, everything mounts on a chassis with the frame, the battery up front, the uh, tractor riding component, the wheels, and then the uh, hood and the radiator, radiator hood, and everything going together. So again, a very nice, easy to follow instruction sheet, and it looks like some good detail. So now without further ado, Let's take a look at our plastic components. All right, I'm going to try something different for this review, which I've never done before. These are all the gray plastic components all in one shot. Now, normally I would cycle through them, but I thought it would be interesting just to do this all at the same time. So here we have the inner frame components, the four wheel backs for those giant tires, all of the suspension components here for the front end. Then we've got that wedge and the engine cover, a support here, a bunch of these little axle extension components, 
um, parts of our turbine engine, the drive shafts, the differentials, the instrument panel, the top of the body. This is our underpan here. Then there's our seat, the uh, front little frame horns in there, the battery pack, fuel cell, and a engine support. So now let's uh, bring this up into the camera here. And you can see the nice detail in there for uh, how simple this is. A couple little mold marks happening here. I do believe you can easily sand them out or fill them in. This little steering wheel here is actually for the tractor. The car one is on the tractor sprue, which we'll be showing in a few minutes. The smooth body on there. So that's nice and easy. Then here we've got our suspension components. And you can see the nice detailing going on in there. Very simplistic. Of course, this is all tubular rods. There's our tie, tie rods there, as well as some of the supports. And uh, drive shafts, the instruments, they're sticking right out on that uh, panel there. Okay, then we get into our body. You can see some nice detailing here. These are actually opened vents. A little door in the back. <laughs> A couple little scoops to help cool down the turbine engine. There's our fuel cell, the batteries. Fairly simplistic on the batteries. The seat has nice buckles in it. And if we turn it over, a couple of mold marks, but I'm not, not really sure that these would affect any fit and finish of this kit. So we'll just put them down there. Then we've got our body. This is very simple, very smooth. Of course, for aerodynamics underneath the car. A couple, little bit of a sink marks in here from the uh, little square molded on that side. So you could fill this if you want, or just carefully sand it until this comes flush. Very nicely done. Then we've got the front, which of course would fit on here, like that. It is. A fairly nice fit. Might need a little bit of uh, sanding in there. Once you get the glue on, it should all melt together. And this has a bit of a mesh to it. You can hear. So that might even be painted flat black, sort of like an early carbon fiber or something. Or it may even be uh, sort of like an air cleaner. Not too sure. Not, not very many details on it. And then finally we have this little support brace here, which is molded quite nicely. A couple of mold marks on the back just to sand out, but not a big deal. So now let's actually look at the little tractor components. And here's our components for the tractor, except for the steering wheel, which is for the car. <laughs> anyway, you get these four-piece rear tires and four-piece front tires, all hard plastic. There's the battery the uh, transmission right there and our tractor seat and some of the tractor components this would be the radiator and the hood there's our little frame for our tractor and not sure what that is may possibly part of the seat back again the detail is quite nice in here considering the vintage of the kit look at the tire treads on there very typical of tractor tires Nice uh, uh, cooling on the uh, transmission there. The seat, of course, is transparent. You can see through it. It's very cool. Not too much on those mold marks. A couple on the back right there, as you can see. Sh should be sanded down for fit and finish purposes. But again, quite nice. You even got the grippy on the back of the steering wheel. And, of course, we got a little subframe. That's... Uh, tractor frame. <laughs> so again, quite nice. Now we've got my most favorite part of all the plastic model kits, and that of course is the chrome tree. And this is where the model really shines. <laughs> Alright, so there are quite a few great pieces in here. This basically makes up the rest of the model. 
So we've got our turbine engine made of chrome, because in the future everything is chrome. We also have our chrome tractor engine over here, sort of like a Brigand Stratton in a lot of ways. And then we've got our Indy wheels. There are knockoffs in here, all kinds of great suspension components and whatnot. I do believe there's the knockoffs there, which go right through the wheel. Then they would connect into the disc brakes and our rear suspension components and all that jazz. So let's bring this up to the camera and take a look at the detail work. See the nice detail on the turbine. It's sort of like a jet, isn't it? And then uh, we've got our disc brakes and rotors, the springs. There's all the front suspension and rear suspension components. The roll bar. More of the uh, bits and pieces for the uh, turbine engine there. A lot of cool components. Turning it over, uh, not too much to see on this side. There is nice detail on the cover for the tractor motor. and Or that's the transfers for the uh, turbine, pardon me. But yeah, a lot of great stuff going on here. So again, very nice for the vintage. And the chrome is where it really shines. All right, so here I'm doing another double double up we've got our clear parts and as you can see we get our windshield and then there's the top and bottom co clear covers for the turbine motor as well as the uh, tires we've got here so these are of course got the web in them so I've got them with the web up and then two with the web down you can see that the tires need a lot of work there's a lot of flash into them but they will look good once done. These are Goodyear tires, the 9.50. Uh, of course, that means like your wide racing tire. Nice tread on them. And then there's that web there. And uh, looking at the glass detail, there's some nice clear ribs into these covers. And then the windshield is prototypical to the actual car. So again, even for the vintage, this is still quite a lot of nice parts. And finally, we have the decal sheet for STP Turbine Car with the big number 70s on here. There is a lot of sponsors going on, including STP. And then, of course, we've got our Lotus brand logo right there, as well as the little British flags with Lotus written on them. And then here's where we get into all our sponsorship decals. And as you can see, there are a lot, including the little MPC swish here, and the Firestone Premier STP Oil Treatment Special, all this kind of stuff. So again, a very nice detailing work for our STP turbine car. And that completes our look at the MPC Lotus Indy Turbine Car. And how many of you out there have built this model in the past? Did you like it? What were your impressions? Let us know in the comment section down below, and if you have photographs of it, you can share it on our Facebook page. Well, I hope you enjoyed that amazing review of the 1968 Lotus Indy Turbine car. And if you love these great videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share them with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a video, you are the first to know about it. And you don't want to miss what's coming up for the other 1968 cars in this amazing, great unboxing series, as well as 6970, and on into the modern age. So let's get this video up to 100 views, and until next week, happy racing!